hold of God in prayer and you get a hold of his word, you could be an example and you could turn the world upside down. felt compelled tonight to share with you a uh, announcement and update about an event that's coming up <clears throat> and then just thinking about making the announcement uh, the Spirit of the Lord just came upon me so strong and inside of me and just wanting to remind you of this concept of marriage and how vitally important it is in this hour First of all, I wanted to say that um, we have a romance ball at our fellowship. And if you're in this East Texas area, we would love to have you. It's going to be on February 11th, uh, this 2017 in Longview, Texas. And we can get the details to you. If you contact me, we can get that information to you. Um, you know, in life, you need checkups. You know, you go to the doctor, you get a checkup. Well, God calls us, like in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, he says, all the males shall appear three times a year. Well, that's a commandment so that we uh, give account as males. Uh, the Bible also says, don't forsake the assembly. You know, why do you have to constantly assemble with the body? Because when you do, it puts you together with the joints and the marrow that he has for you in his life and you realign he is able to christ in the body is able to realign you with his purpose he is the plumb line and he is able to line you back up and that's why we have to continue to pray and then we also have to continue to assemble with each other well when it comes to marriage the body of uh, the lord has spoken to our local fellowship here in marshall texas that every year uh, around the middle of February, we are to assemble in a marriage, uh, we call it a romance, uh, a romance ball. And the purpose of this event is to celebrate and foster Christian marriage and, and the marriage between our husbands and our wives. And to just have a night where we uh, decree that this is a marriage of God and that we are committed to it. And to really look over in our life the areas where we might be falling short or we could do better or we could pour more of our heart into our, our mates, into our wives, into our husbands. And to see where, hey, we could lay down our life to, to a, a greater degree. But this event this year is on February 11th. And I have just been so blessed. It has taken our marriage to another level. And there is something about the anointing of Christ when he calls for a sacred assembly, whatever the purpose is, whether it's a revival, whether it's a camp meeting, whether it's a youth encampment or retreat, this is a marriage uh, enrichment. And what it does is when he brings his anointing, it causes you to look over everything in your life in this topic or in this, in this area. And it forces you to submit to him and to be accountable to him and to answer to him and he will show you things that maybe you're doing really well and some things maybe you're not doing so well and it's an awesome opportunity to rededicate you yourself to him in discipleship and your marriage to him and to your spouse 
And I just want to encourage you, if anyone has the opportunity to go, I strongly encourage this. Now, uh, Arlene Arrington was one of the founders of this banquet. And um, it, was, it was birth because of a, there's a feast uh, in the Jewish uh, tradition called the Feast of Purim. And this feast kind of centers around uh, Esther in the Bible and when she saved a nation, okay? And she stuck her neck out there uh, in front of the king and said, hey, I am a Jew and, I, and you need to save this nation. This nation is worth saving. She stuck her neck out. She laid down her life. And the gallows and the, the execution that was planned for the Jewish people actually turned against the guy that was, that was doing it, Haman. The, the gallows that were, dis, that were intended for the Jews turned on Haman. And I just really feel like tonight that there is a, uh, there is a, uh, a spirit working against marriage. And we have seen so many marriages succumb to the pressures of this world. There is an attack on marriage right now. Uh, marriage is between a man and a woman. And this is, this is being attacked by the evil one, by the enemy. And it is time right now, this is a time to save a nation. And we've talked about with Trump, he said that we're going to make this nation great again. The only one that can make this nation great is Jesus Christ. And the, the next thing he looks for is the homes. And he looks for Christian marriage. And he wants to set up Christian covenant marriages. Marriages that will last. Marriages that are committed to each other in Christ. And this is what is going to save a nation. He uses Christian households to promulgate the Christian, to, to promulgate Christ in the earth, to uh, bring forth Christian offspring, uh, children. And so it is so important that we as husbands and wives give ourselves right now in this season to Christ and rededicate our lives and our marriages back to Him. And we can do that together during this time. Now, I just wanted to read a few scriptures uh, from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32 it says this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church now when he speaks of marriage he is speaking of a great mystery but the mystery now has been revealed it is the mystery of death and marriage is about dying for each other okay and when you see divorces when you see marriages falling apart someone uh, forgot to die for the other one. Someone forgot to lay down their life. And, and in the New Testament, in the Gospels, uh, Jesus says that they will know that you are my disciples because of your love. Okay, And that is the mystery of marriage, is can you love someone more than yourself? You know, And that's the second commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. Your closest neighbor is your wife, gentlemen. Your closest neighbor, ladies, is your husband. And so we're looking for opportunities to lay our life down. I've heard it said before that you enter into the love wars. And I'm not talking about fussing and fighting and arguing. I'm talking about uh, uh, looking for opportunities to lay your life down for your spouse. You know, I'm a pretty competitive person involved in sports and things like that. And so it's like a game to see how could I lay my life down more for my wife this year than I did last year. And I have to ask, I have to go to God and I have to ask Him, give me the strategies. Increase my love for you and for my wife that I would be thinking of her, that I would be conscious of her, that I would be able to lay down my life, to make her life better, more special, more rewarding, and to be able to bless her more and more and more. So I just really sense as I'm sharing this with you, there is an anointing there is an ability in Christ right now, and I just want to, let's just stop for a minute and pray and decree. Father, I thank you, God, for whoever is watching, Father, that you are saving a nation today through Christian marriage. I pray, Father, for anyone with the sound of my voice, that the spirit of conviction would fall, that, Father, you would begin to convict us of sin, of righteousness, and justice. I pray, Father, that you would move in our hearts, God, that, Lord, marriages that need to be restored, 
marriages that are doing great that you would continue to strengthen and that Lord marriages that are about to go through a tough spot that you would fireproof them that you would save them that you would rescue them and I pray that Christian marriage would grow and increase God though the enemy would persecute us and afflict us I pray for the multiplication right now of Christian marriage in America and I pray this in Jesus name well, I'm just really excited about that, that that word is dropped in my spirit. Though the enemy comes to persecute us and afflict us, that Christian marriage is going to increase. It is going to multiply. And I just receive that right now, and I just pray that over you right now. And I'm just so encouraged by this. And gentlemen, I want to uh, make one more challenge to you. And we are, I don't know how many days, 30 or so days out from our February 11th, but I want to issue a challenge to you. And that is, take the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, starting in verse 10. It goes from 10 to the end of the chapter. And I want you to take each verse, and I want you to read each verse, and I want you to pray about each verse, and then I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you a love letter to your wife based on that verse. So you'd start at Proverbs 31:10. And then you would the you know, you could do it every day, you could do it, you know, every other day, however you want to do it. You can carry it out it's like a, you know, the 21-day challenge or the 30-day challenge. And you take each scripture, the first one is who can find a virtuous woman. And you write a short note love letter to your wife on some stationery and say to her, thank you that God has given me a virtuous woman. Take each of those verses and build up to, you know, if you're coming to the February 11th thing here in Marshall, Texas, you can build up to that. If you're somewhere else and you can't be at that event, build it up to a dinner or something else. But anyway, guys, I just want to challenge you on that. And not only are you going to be writing her a love letter or an encouragement letter, which is going to build her up, but you're also going to pray and decree these things over your wife, okay? Wives, uh, you can do this as well, but this kind of is the specifically from the Proverbs 31 perspective is from the husband writing to the wife. The other thing is some, some verses you'll see that your wife has got a, a greater strength in certain verses than other verses. Other verses you might say, well, there's a weakness there. Well, this is your time to build up to encourage and to pray and decree and to speak those things that be not as though they are and take the word gentlemen like the Bible says and by the washing of the water of the word and wash your wives with this word well I'm just so excited tonight I'm just so excited about what God is doing and I just think that I mean we've been told that there's gonna be breakthroughs We've, we've been told that God is going to show himself uh, in our midst, and I just can't wait to hear the testimonies of Christian marriage. I can't wait for my marriage to go to another level. I can't wait for your marriage to go to another level, but I just really sense that um, there is going to be a great breakthrough, great uh, fire of the Lord on Christian marriages. He's going to send you out. He sends us out two by two. He's going to send us out as these strong marriages that are going to reveal the character and the nature of Christ. And again it says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Okay? And it says in verse 20 um, 23, no 25, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we're talking about just getting excited. The Lord is going to get you excited about laying down your life for your wife, guys. And I, th I just think that's great. I mean, uh, marriage is about death. That is the mystery. You know, when we start, we don't know that. But it's all about learning to love someone more than yourself. And unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But if we can fall into the ground this year, gentlemen, and die... And God is just going to bring forth a great harvest in our marriage, in our family. So I'm just so excited about this. Keep decreeing this. Keep speaking over your wife. And just get stirred up about what God's doing in our marriages this year. And if you get a chance to come on February 11th, we'd love to have you. 
Okay, thanks. We'll talk to you later.